Give you the clap. Sure, why not? Don't give me the clap. (laughs) (laughs) Wait a minute. Wait, no. All right. Let's not go there. All right. Welcome back to DJs on the block. Uh, And uh, like Jim just said, it's here. It's not going away. And uh, it's scary. And uh, it's exciting. And uh, that's DJs on the block. So uh, we're here with (laughs) Jim Henderson, Ramon on the on the uh, phone call dialing in uh, Todd Geisler to my left mm-hmm. and uh, and me. Uh, so let's uh, maybe talk a little bit about where where this generative AI is going. I know Jim was trying to spoil the uh, the the whole you know flow of this thing by Sorry. jumping ahead. <laughs> Jeez. But uh, I didn't so really dogging so him. Now really is, dogging now is him your Glenn. moment, Come Jim. On, that was a teaser. <laughs> that was a teaser. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't don't. Uh, now's your time to shine. So uh, step into the step well, into the light. I mean, once you get past the the functionality things we're all talking about, which we didn't really talk about the whole moral creative stealing aspect of this thing. Yeah, that has, yeah that's right. We didn't talk it has about many, that. Well, let's talk about that. It has many people either hating this or, I mean, that's kind of a big deal, you know? And I think, I think that I've seen some photographers respond to it like, this isn't real. It's never going to be real. I hate it. Yeah, but this is that is not that, what I do? But in, I, I, are they I, hating in self defense? Well, I think they're. I think I think <clears throat> you're feeling like your craft is being diminished because what you're saying is, is somebody with little to no training can sit down and make a beautiful photograph that I've learned how to do with yeah. years of experience, <clears throat> and it diminishes your it diminishes your value a little bit. Yeah, and so mm-hmm. you tend to not want to, you know, you don't you don't like to see that happen, and so I think. And then there's other sides of it where people are like, I mean, I don't know where I stand on this. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> I think it's really cool. Yeah. And I think that, you know, I'm an older guy too. I'm not like a photographer just starting out. And it's like, it's fun to play with. It's it's fun to see the limits of what it can do and see how far it can go. And and it it's generally a really, really cool tool. But, yeah. you know, I mean, I think, it, that just stirs up those whole, I think if you try to ride a moral high ground on this thing, you're going to lose mm-hmm. because ultimately money talks. And if you can deliver a beautiful looking thing that looks like you went to freaking New Zealand and we're up on the <laughs> right. Lord of the Rings and with yeah. your product and whatever, I'm not saying you can totally do that yet, but if you can do that and do it for a really reasonable cost, what do you think? A, what do you think a client's going to want to do mm-hmm. or yeah. anybody else? I mean, that, that's just the reality of it, and right. is that if it's going to save as much time as it saves the chat GPT does with people talking about, you know, like Ramon was talking about all the legal yep. stuff that saves all this time, same thing going to be said for photo shoots and for other things that it's going to be a huge, huge saver on that. Mm-hmm. And that's going to impact the photography world, could impact it hugely, right. you know? Right. I mean, there is no getting around that. So, I mean... If you're going to write, I, I mean, I'm, I'm in the arena of thinking, I want to see how I can use it. I haven't explored how I can use it to better what I shoot, but you know what? We all use Photoshop to make what we shoot better too. I mean, mm-hmm. let's be honest here, you know, and, right. and people that are saying, well, <clears throat> it's, it's stealing, it's stealing information from somebody else and it's 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 mirroring that well as you and i talked before at coffee when we worked in the ad world we would come up with an ad idea and we'd go we need to get a music house to do us a piece of music that sounds like john mellencamp but it isn't john mellencamp yeah right? and yeah. it but it's got that flavor to it i mean i don't see we were any, always getting close you know yeah, whatever I, I, you could do there's no difference yeah, to me exactly for the generations of time just look at the old painters and artists. They were all looking at something that inspired them. You know what I mean? The way exactly uh, someone you know built built an old barn or a building or a design or right. I think that we sometimes put too much into that because the reality is we're all being inspired by somebody, if not even God Himself. If you right. Think yeah. About it, the mountains, the sky, everything that God has created here on this earth is inspiration for artists and if you think about it from that trickling down we've always been inspired you know whether it's creators and producers who look up references 
hey, look at how they did the yeah. sky on this, you know, in this film. We want to do a sky just like that, but we want to put it together with this. I mean, how many times have we done we, that? We, you know, and then we obviously create something new and, and original based on that. But it's absolutely always been inspired. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, don't you think you know I mean? photographers and, and illustrators were always, you know, worried that Photoshop came out? And you're mm -hmm. like, you know, because right. everything was in camera, you know, and, and, and Jim, you even talked about, uh, you know, Ansel Adams would say it's like 50 percent of the, uh, you know, of the image is created on scene and 50 percent is in the dark room. Right. You know, because you're dodging, you're burning, you're doing stuff and. My dad was a retoucher, you know, and he did it the old fashioned way with dye transfers and airbrush and, and, all airbrush this. and everything. So you were literally cutting together photos, putting them together hmm. and then retouching them. Right. So, I mean, it's been around forever. So we're just it's just kind of another form different, of that different in, iteration in, of it. Now we're using prompts and we're using stuff. But so that was analog generative. Yeah. Work, right. And this is digital generative work. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. I, you know, it's just, again, it just comes down to the, I think what it comes down to, like I said, it's the fact that somebody can do something with little train. I mean, they can get lucky with little training, little to no training <laughs> Yeah, and put something in and get something amazing out that would, take years of training to do right. the way that we've learned how to do it. And that to me is like, that's a, that's something that all of us as artists are going to have to figure out how to get, well, how I are mean, we going to get along with that? How are we going to get by with that? Because. I mean, look at you know, coding, you know, coding, you had to write all the lines of code. You had to do this. Right. And now it's like, you just kind of create a box, you put it in place and it writes the code at the back, you right. know, or, you know, now you can probably get chat GPT to, you know, write you code for, you know, an entire site. I don't right. know. Right. It's, mm -hmm. it's just, it's progress, you know, it's moving really damn fast. Yeah. No. You I, know, so that's the, that's the crazy stuff. Right. And I think it's going to, it's going to be working in uh, motion too. You know, Ramon, you were talking about that. I, I know I've seen, I saw stop motion. It was like, it was an animation and they were using, uh, I think, uh, Mid Journey, or maybe it was Dolly, to create all the individual pieces. Mm -hmm. So they had to do, you know, thousands and thousands of of stills where things move just slightly, and then they created that. And the and the hardest thing for them was to get the same kind of lighting and same, you know, yeah. uh, all the same kind of aspects of it. And, I don't know. They figured something out how to do it. There's there's flickering and stuff, but they run it through you know different kind of processes and stuff. You know, an, an interesting thing I saw yeah. written by one of the famous <clears throat> art reps in, across the country who talked to somebody about this said that they compared this to when photography that when photography first started it was going to replace illustration. Yeah, and it didn't because it's a it's a different kind of thing. But part of what the argument on this that I saw was that. Well, it, it, it can't, it can't, you know, it's not real. So it can't capture the emotion that a real photo that captures the real emotion can capture. And I, sorry, but I'm going to beg to differ that <laughs> that's not all that. That's then saying that art, that like uh, art rendering doesn't have any emotion. Yeah. I mean, that, you know that's, what? that's not it brings true. up the question of what is real anymore, because, you know, it used to be <clears throat> if it was a photograph and you saw it, it was real. Right. Right. And now, no, that's with all the deep gone. fake, all everything else. I mean, it's great. You're talking about the voice replacement and music. We've got mm -hmm. deep fakes where, you know, it, it's kind of cool that you could have, you know, Tom Cruise uh, dubbed instead of being dubbed in in Japanese, he's actually mouthing all the word. They just take it and they re, they you know refigure right. his mouth, and then they put in a new script and the whole thing. But goes. then the ramifications of of the socially or of the world yeah if you can create okay i'm sorry let's let's say you create a scene of a uh, uh head of a country getting assassinated mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and Start you post that revolution <laughs> no you know, I, mean, or a, I mean you, you know i mean it it what is going to be it, what is going to be real it used to what's be what's going to be you know, believable what's yeah. going to be believable yeah. well it used to be like you'd take things out of context and you're like oh here's you know this president saying this about, you know, something, but it, it wasn't really related. Right. Now you just create the whole thing, you yeah. know, and you just, you go, okay, I'm going to do this. It it's becomes like, you know, a realistic avatar. 
Mm-hmm. And you can have them doing anything. Yes. Exactly. I mean, so, I, yeah, the, vo- the voice can get really dangerous, though. I will say there's a lot of, a lot of dangers to, to the AI voice. Yeah. Uh, obviously, beyond just everything you guys are saying, and then obviously, you know, everything that it can do in the on the fraud side. I remember when we did the Citibank identity theft campaign and we went at Fallon. I was there, got to work on that as a young assistant producer. And just trying to get the different voices, you know, to match these people and sort of, you know, these people obviously look very different in the voices and all that had to be worked on so meticulously, so particularly to see something that can match voices that, that closely yeah. and to think about yeah. identity theft alone, fraud. And you know what I mean? No, right. that, 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 the voice brings a whole nother level of. I think uh, challenges to our world. <laughs> so, Ramon, you know, uh, yeah. when I was when I was at um, where was I? Uh, was it? I think it must have been Carmichael. Yeah, I think it was Carmichael, and um, and I was working on a on a, um, a sports cards, you know, trading card uh, campaign, and the guest the guest photographer was Christy Brinkley, right? And I was like, oh, and they said, oh, you know, because we were talking about what kind of things we were looking for, and they said. You know, I think uh, Christy Brinkley, we got to know Christy Brinkley was, was going to give me a call, right? And I was like, no way. So I wouldn't answer my phone for, and it, t- it was like three weeks. I wouldn't answer my phone because I wanted Christy Brinkley to leave a message saying, <laughs> hey, Glenn, this is Christy Brinkley. Call me back, right? So I was like, well, I'm, there's no way I'm going to answer my phone because I want that message, right? Now I could just, you know, I could you type just, it up and I'd be like, oh, put it in own. Christy Brinkley's voice, you know. But think of what we had to go through to get some of those things, those little sound bites. I know. That's pretty – well, that I, yeah. I mean, it, it it's uh, – <clears throat> now once it – yeah, we're just kind of getting to the – and we're getting to the tip of the iceberg here with some of this stuff yeah. because I think once you start, which, you know, I'm not any great prognosticator of the future, but – if it can do as well as what it's doing and the technology is going as fast as it is, like Ramon said, I didn't even think about the voice thing. Mm. I mean, that's, that's like, that's huge. I mean, and you need, you'd only need a few snippets. You don't need no, a lot I mean, to determine know. what the voice is going to be. No, I, I mean, check this out. This is, uh, you, you, you all might've seen this. I'm just going to play like a couple seconds of this. This is a, this is a deep fake Morgan Freeman thing that you can find on Twitter. What you see is not real. Well, at least in contemporary terms, it is not. What if I were to tell you that I'm not even a human being? Would you believe me? <laughs> so, I mean, that kind of thing is crazy. And, and that's, you can't believe what you see anymore. No, you won't. From here yeah. on out. No, you really can't. Yeah. So I think that's, that, that becomes a bigger picture because your reality is what you want your reality to be. Right. So that's mm-hmm. why we have such, uh, you know, such a divide between the left and the right. Because everybody's got their own ideology and they're reinforced as truths on both ends, mm-hmm. you know? So it's, yeah. it's just made um, it really hard to find a middle ground. Yeah. For sure. And, and re- reconnecting it back to the, uh, the roots of what you were asking, Glenn, and what um, you guys were discussing, Jen and Todd. Like, you know, as I see it, I don't know, I, I see it a couple of different ways and I can see uh, you know, Jim, why you made such great points on that, you know, you don't know where to stand. And, and that's a fair statement because as a, you know, someone who's worked their butt off, you know, um, on multiple sides of, of, of the career path um, as a creative and a developer and someone who has built things from scratch to a photographer and everything you've, you've worked for. Um, and, and obviously you're a microcosm of thousands and thousands to millions of artists and, you know, photographers, creatives, and and such. And so, with that, I do think a couple things hit me in terms of what I'm seeing and what you know I feel. I think that overall, it, as it hits towards the motion side as well, because it will. Um, you know, it, it, for, as a matter of fact, we're actually doing some shoots now on what we call volume sets. You know, with Unreal Engine, and we do quite a bit of projects now on Unreal. And the things that Unreal can do makes it almost unfair, you know, um, even in the animation world, because it's some things that don't require the rendering time they used to require, right? you know, before. 
So those are also things that are speeding certain processes up that used to take a lot more, a lot more artists, you know? So you look at it from that perspective. And, but I think that in the end, there's going to be a couple things that are kind of, you know, remain true and kind of come to light. Yeah. Bring Even it home, Ramon, process. bring it home. <laughs> I think that a couple things, um, for example, I think that a lot of artists, um, well, as we go here and as the things start to generate, I think that a lot of artists are going to, you know, the true artists will still rise to the top. I think there's going to be a lot of artists, as you said earlier, I think it was Jim or Todd said that there's going to be people who are going to fall off, you know, especially some of the lower tabletop artists that don't have more imaginative ideas and things like that they do the basics and sort of do the somewhat vanilla cookie cutter work. Yes. I do think they have to worry about their jobs, but at the same time, I still think the elevated artists that, you know what I mean? Really push boundaries are still going to be seeked out because honestly, I think in the end, the results are going to matter. Like the clients are going to look at the data and see how did people react to this? And you know, if it's AI generated or whatever, just because you got it cheap doesn't mean it's going to work. And I think that a lot of that will come to light in the, in the data and authenticity will still be winning out. There'll still be things that are done real and practical and clients will see, wow, that's still doing really, really well. And that was shot practically. What was real about that? What was authentic about it? So I do believe a lot of that will counterbalance some of this like, oh, it looks like a pretty amazing image or whatever. And then on the video and motion side, I do think that yes, some things will challenge certain artists and certain things. But at the end of the day, when I look at what I do every day as a producer and how much we have to put together in all these different parts, um, I just don't see how an AI machine could in the end do all that custom made. There's just so many pieces that have to come together to make something that you know with, was tried and true and made into one. You might have parts of that that AI can help with. So I think ultimately it's going to come down to the human experience and like how people react to it. And I think this is going to be another tool that, yes, will move very fast. But at the same time, I still think um, some of this will become tried and true and kind of even and balance itself out. I really, I do really believe that. I don't think all photographers... I remember when I was told in 2005, TV is dead. You won't see TV after 2008. Three years, TV will be dead. And I was like, man, that's not happening. And, you know, TV is still here. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, there's less viewers in certain parts of television and broadcast, but it's still around. And it's still the most powerful medium to reach millions. And, And yes, social digital has exploded. So I just think it's one of those parts in time or one of those moments in time that we're going through. And I still think there's like a place for it and it's going to be interesting how it evolves. Totally. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, well, <clears throat> I guess that kind of wraps things up. Uh, thank wanna, you guys. Yeah. Jeez. I want to, I want to thank, uh, Jim, Jim Henderson. Uh, you can find him at Jim Henderson photos, uh, com. photo. Or yes, yeah, sorry, Jim Henderson photo. I have it on my thing here. I just uh, yes, you, thank you. You you, you pluralized just, it. Yeah, I, I pluralized <laughs> it. He is more than just one. I only have one photo on my website. <laughs> <laughs> just one. Really good though. It's really good. Uh, so, Say yeah. I generated. So Jim Jim Henderson photo. We'll put the we'll put the uh, the links below. Uh, and uh, a great photographer. Uh, you know, look him up. Use him. Uh, and Ramon uh, Nunez uh, of Baby Lion of L.A. and Buenos Aires. Uh, and uh, he's, he can be found on uh, babylion.tv. Um, any, anything else uh, uh, you can think of to find? And any other socials any you want to share? <laughs> yeah, any other social you want to share? <laughs> You know, we post our journey of different projects we do for clients on the video and film and creative technology and experiential side. Um, we're at uh, on IG at babyline.tv as well. So both our website and our IG are at the same handle. Okay. Babyline.tv. Great. Awesome. 
All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Uh, thank you. It was great to to talk about AI and everything. And uh, yeah, I think we should do it again sometime, a few months down the road. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. it'll completely gonna, change. It'll by the way, it'll be different. <laughs> yeah, we will be like, remember back then when we were talking <laughs> way about back this then, two way months ago. Back then. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, uh, no, this was fun, you guys. Thank you so much for inviting us, Glenn and Todd, and love what you guys are doing and love this platform for you guys to kind of bring it to our world and bring awareness. I think it's awesome. Uh, keep doing what you're doing and I'll be happy to be back if you ever invite me back. So awesome. All Great. right. Well, Sounds good. we are DJs on the block and that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Uh, thanks for sticking with us. Take care guys. Oh.